Our theme for this year is God looks at the heart. The Bible has a lot to say about the hearts of men and women. I want to invite your attention to the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, there I will read verses 15 and 16. And then I will skip down and read verses 20 through 23, the sixth chapter of 2 Samuel, beginning with the 15th verse. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Cal, Saul's daughter, uh, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Skipping down to verse 20, then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said unto me called, it was before the Lord who has chosen me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord I will yet be more vile than dust, and will be base in mine own sight. And of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Amen. I want to talk about the problem of having ill feelings in your heart the problem of having ill feelings in your heart. David, the son of Jesse, has now become king over Israel. Under his leadership, we knew and we see that David's desire was that God would have his rightful place among the children of Israel record reveals that David understood the importance, the significance of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. For we know that while Saul was king, the Ark of the Lord had been behind closed doors. But now that David is king, David wanted to bring out the Ark before the children of Israel so that public worship unto God would be restored among God's chosen people. The record says that David and some of his people had tried the first time to bring the ark back to the city of David. But tragedy happened because they didn't go about it the proper way. Then David found out how God wanted them uh, to bring the ark safely back into town. And when they did it like God said do it, the Bible says they were successful. Uh, they were able to now bring the ark back to Jerusalem. They were celebrating. They were shouting. David himself got so happy that he danced before the Lord. Uh, the people were celebrating. Everybody was happy that the Ark of the Covenant, which was a divine symbol or a visible symbol of God's divine presence, was now back in their midst. David shouted. He danced before the Lord, giving praise to God. You would think that everybody would be happy that everybody would be joyful in this praise celebration. 
But the record says that David had a wife by the name of Michal. Michal stood in the window of the palace looking at David dance and give God praise. And the record says she despised David in her heart. God literally here exposes what's in this young lady's heart. The record says that she despised the king. She despised David. It bothered me because here she was, the first lady of Jerusalem. She was the king's wife. This woman was exposed to riches. Uh, she was looked up to because of who her husband was. And you would think she would help lead the women in celebrating, in rejoicing at what her husband, the king, was able to accomplish. But the Bible says she despised him in her heart. When the record says she despised him, means that she, she has scorn toward him in her heart. Uh, uh, that that she, she, she resented him in her heart. She had contempt toward him in her heart. She was bitter toward David in her heart. This young lady had a heart problem. Are y'all listening to me? And listen, there's nothing any worse than a heart problem. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, you may not have the best of clothes, but your heart ought to be right. You may not live in the finest of houses, but your heart got to be right. This, this woman was married to King David, but yet the record says she despised him in her heart. He was the king. He was a husband. He was anointed. He was a man after God's own heart. But yet she despised this up this morning because there might be some of us in here who just like Michal, you have a heart problem. Somebody in your life who you despise. Somebody in your life you have ill feelings toward. You ought not be comfortable with having ill feelings in your heart. You ought not uh, go from day to day all right with having scorn in your heart. It ought to bother you if your heart is not right with God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this young lady who I expected to be shouting was upset. Uh, she, she had ill feelings in her heart toward her husband. And you'd be surprised how many folk are sleeping in the same bed. But one can't stand the other. Eating at the same table. And got ill feelings in their heart. Riding in the same car. But yet got ill feelings in their heart. Worship at the same church. Sing in the same choir. Usher on the same usher auxiliary. Sometimes sitting on the same pew. And got ill feelings. I wish y'all were praying with me this morning. Her heart, she had a heart problem. Her heart was not right. The text says when David and Israel came back, she stood in the window and she despised him in her heart. 
As soon as he came home, she went out in the yard and met him, and she talked to him and said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself parading around here like a fool. And David said, it was before the Lord. He said, I was praising God. Uh, God put me as king in the place of your daddy. And uh, said, if you think this was something, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, y'all. And he said, I'm going to praise God even more. As a matter of fact, the ladies that you're talking about, uh, how I paraded myself in front of them, they got more respect for me than you do. And you my wife. And then the writer put a footnote there said that this girl, his wife, was not able to have any children. There's something about her heart that we need to examine uh, that will help you and I on the day. First of all, since the Bible says she despised in her heart, what are the characteristics of one who has ill feelings in their heart? Well, look at the text. She was not celebrating with everybody else. I mean, I mean she, she couldn't get into the celebration. And listen, don't you know folk have the same problem when they come to church? <laughs> Amen. The reason why some folk can't get into the celebration, can't get into the worship, is because the heart is not right. Are y'all listening to me? They, 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 they can't feel it. They, they can't get with it because there's something wrong in their heart. This girl, this girl, because of the condition of her heart, she couldn't rejoice like everybody else. Are y'all listening to me? Her joy was gone. It was missing. It was absent in her life. But that's not all. The text says that while they were shouting, she was just looking. She stood in the window looking. She was watching instead of worshiping. We got folk like that in our churches. They don't come to worship. They come to watch. Are y'all listening to me? This woman, this woman couldn't get into the service. She proved her heart was not right because she was just there looking. And I don't know about you, but I don't come to church just to look. I come to worship. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, when you come to church, this is not a picture show. This is not a movie theater. You know, picture show is what we used to call it. But, but this is not a theater. This is, this is not a place of entertainment. We come to worship God. You see, when you, when you just come to church just to watch, you're going to find yourself being critical. Yeah, you'll find something wrong in the service. You'll find something, I don't care how good it goes, you'll find something wrong. <laughs> you know, the preacher, he didn't preach long, or he preached too long, and he should have cut it off sooner. And, you know, why he had to preach about that? <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. He, 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 he was meddling with me this morning in that sermon. You find anything. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what? Why come Mary then just go on and sing? Why she had to start talking about something? You'll find anything. Oh, y'all listen to me. Anything wrong. Preacher took five minutes before we had the offering talking about something in the Bible. Well, that's what we do at church. Are you listening to me? See, when you, when you, get, when you just come to be a watcher, You'll become critical. And it proves that your heart is not right. This girl's heart was not right because she should have been shouting with thanksgiving. Because look at who she was. She was the daughter of King Saul. Are y'all listening to me? Saul and some of his sons had already been killed. And she should have been thanking God she's still alive. Are y'all listening to me? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, she had no gratitude. She had no thanksgiving to give to God. She should have been glad and grateful that, that God gave her husband another chance. 
to bring the ark back into the city of David. She knew he had tried the first time and failed, and she should have been happy and grateful that God gave him another chance. Are y'all listening to me? Now, you know a person's heart is messed up when they can't stand to see a person get another chance. Some folk, when you mess up, they don't want you to straighten up. Some folk, when you're down, they want to keep you down. But if your heart is right, you ought to be glad to see God give somebody another chance and see them get up again. But that's not all. The disrespect that she had. This man was not just a husband. He was her king. He was God's anointed. He was a man after God's own heart. And yet she went out there. She couldn't even wait till he got to the house on the inside and talk in private. She goes out there in front of the folk who are there, say, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Parading around here like a fool in front of all of these women. She, she had no respect. Are y'all listening to me? And you don't talk to a king with disrespect. She should have been afraid that this man would banish her. Are y'all listening to me? But because her heart was not right, she didn't respect him. And yet wonder why some folk don't show respect. The heart is not right. Are y'all listening to me? Look at the disrespect. Some things you need to take care of at the house. I mean, why you want to say what you got to say to your mate in front of other folk? Some things you need to take in the house and keep it behind. Closed. Everybody don't need to know what you're arguing about. Oh, y'all listening to me. Everybody don't need to know your business. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, some things need to go on behind closed doors. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody don't need to know y'all fell out over the remote. And <laughs> some things you ought to be ashamed to let other folk know about. She walks out there in front of everybody and she starts talking. Prove that her heart was not right. She's critical of the king and what he had done for God. And oh, whenever people criticize what you do for God, the heart is not right. I'm trying to hurry up and get through, but not only do I see the characteristics of her having this ill feeling in her heart, but the question comes, what was the cause? Uh, well, how in the world did she end up having ill feelings in her heart toward the king, her husband? I mean, when you read back in the 18th chapter of 1 Samuel, uh, the Bible tells us that she loved David. Are y'all listening? When David had killed the Philistine named Goliath, in the 18th chapter, the Bible talks about how Jonathan saw a son, a love David, and they became the best of friends. Because brother named Jonathan was David's best friend. Well, the agreement was whoever killed Goliath would be enriched by the king, uh, would take the king's daughter in marriage, and would be free of taxes. And so when David had killed Goliath, he's waiting for his wife. Well, the intention was for him to marry Saul's oldest daughter. But evidently, she didn't want it. So Saul gave her to another man. But her sister, Michal, the Bible says she loved David. She loved David so much that even when Saul was out to kill him, she lied for David. Hid him and helped him to escape through the window so her daddy couldn't get to him. But now, what bothered me, y'all, was the same girl who loved him in 1 Samuel 18 now despises him in a heart. How do you go 
from loving him so in fashion to can't stand him in second Samuel. I mean, I mean, how you go from I love him to I don't love him no more? Are y'all with me here? It's evident that her love was not deep enough. Some folk got shallow love. Y'all ain't praying with me. It don't run deep enough. See, love that runs deep won't make you or won't allow you to hate and despise the person you say you love. You may not like some of their ways, but when you love them, you can't stop loving them. If it run deep. Oh, y'all, if it run deep. Now the reason why the pastor you used to love, you don't, run, you don't love them no more, it didn't run deep. I know you can't say nothing. It was shallow. I mean, you find yourself, I, well, I thought I loved them. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. Ain't nobody but me and you, Lord. Shallow. Love didn't run deep. She went from loving yeah. to despising yeah. him. Yeah. Just trying to help somebody here this morning. Yeah. Well, that's not all. That's not all. I believe that uh, a lack of spiritual devotion uh, brought about her having this type of mentality. This girl didn't grow up in a God-fearing family. Her daddy didn't know God. <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? She was not always around parents and people who love God. And consequently, she can't help but act the way she's acting here in this text because she don't know God. Are y'all listening to me? There's a lack of spiritual devotion. And if you're going to overcome some stuff in your heart, you got to get to know God. You got to be devoted to God. You got to be exposed to people who know God. But that's not all. I believe... Her daddy's influence has something to do with it. Her daddy was an evil man. Her daddy was out to kill the man that God had anointed to take his place. And oh, there was a lot of Saul in his daughter. Are y'all listening to me? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, she knew that her daddy didn't like David. And now she is now practicing some of her daddy's ways. And I think I need to tell you, you ought not dislike somebody just because somebody you kin to don't like them. You ought to get to know a person for yourself. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. No wonder the Bible says she despised him in her heart. But there's one more thing. I believe that a lot of disappointment and defeat caused her to have these ill feelings. This girl has been through a lot, first of all. The reason why her daddy gave her in marriage to David was because he was hoping that through his daughter, he could kill David. That's messed up, isn't it? Gonna use your own child to try to get to a man you can't stand. All right, not only that, but the Bible says after David was on the run from King Saul, you will find that Saul got upset after his daughter helped David to get, to get away. The Bible says he got upset and took his daughter, David's wife, and gave her to another man. Now, she was already married to David. I mean, I mean, I mean, he just because he's the king, he's going to say, well, I don't want you with him no more. I'm going to give you to somebody else. And so he takes her away from David. Are y'all listening to me? And gives her to another man. Are y'all listening? Well, the Bible says when Saul died, 
And David was now king over one tribe of Israel, which was the tribe of Judah. Uh, Saul had a son named Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth assumed leadership of the people of Israel. He said, since dad is gone, I'll be king. And he had a commander of his army named Abner. Well, Ishbosheth accused Abner of messing with one of his daddies uh, or one of Saul's uh, concubines. And so he said, you've been with my daddy's woman. Abner said, you have lost your mind. Said, I'll fix you. How dare you accuse me? I'm helping you to be the king, and you're going to accuse me of messing with one of your daddy's women? I'll show you. And so he went across the river to see David and told David, said, now look here. I'm tired of that boy. And uh, if you want to be leader over all Israel, I can get them for you. David said, all right, one thing I want from you. I want my wife, Michal, back. I want her back. I, I want her back. Abner said, I'll get her. And so they went to where Michal and her second husband were. And they made that girl leave that man. And the Bible said the man followed behind her crying <laughs> because he didn't want to let her go. Sometimes when a person want to go, the best thing you need to do is let him go. He followed behind her crying. And finally one of the fellas told him, man, go on back to the house. Leave it alone, go on back to the house. Ain't no need of him crying because it really wasn't his wife in the first place. She belonged to another man. And you can't expect things to work out in your life when you take somebody else's mate. Somebody need to listen to me. You gonna mess around, take somebody else's mate from them, think you gonna live happily ever after? What goes around? Comes around. And so now she goes back to David. And she don't want to be there. I'm almost through here. It's obvious. Michal don't want to be back with David. So the verse where it says she despised him in her heart, that didn't happen instantly. There's some other stuff that has been going on that caused her to have these ill feelings. And listen, all I'm trying to tell you is sometimes people can let disappointments, bad experiences, being mistreated by folk cause them to harbor ill feelings in their heart. Got to close when I tell you, you can't make folk treat you right. And it's not going to help you to have ill feelings toward all the folk who have done you wrong. The best thing for you to do is to let God have it. Turn it over to the Lord. Let God deal with it. Don't miss what God's got for you behind anybody. Well, I've held you long enough. But I got to close telling you the consequences. This girl, because her heart was not right, Having ill feelings in her heart cause her not to have any joy. And you know, ill feelings will rob you of the joy of the Lord. Oh, it calls her, my brothers and my sisters, to be critical toward a man who was praising God. David addressed it when he said to her, why are you upset with me? I have a right to praise him. And oh, all my brothers and my sisters, she thought because he is the king that you ought not be out there praising God like that. And you know, you can't let your position in life rob you of your praise under God. I don't care what position you hold in life, you ought not ever be ashamed to lift up your hands and praise God. I don't care what position 
you were voted into, what position you were promoted to, don't ever get so anything that you can't praise God. The Bible reminds us that it is God who promotes us. It is God who exalts us. Am I right about it? And just because you're in that special position does not exempt you from praising God. David said, I have a right to give God praise. Even though I am king, it's still my right. And all oh, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know how you feel about it, but I have a right to give God praise. Am I right about it? You know, there's a lot of controversy on the, uh, the right to bear arms, the right to do this, the right to do that. They're trying to stop us from mentioning Jesus' name in schools. Don't want us to mention his name in our prayers. But I got a right to mention his name. I have a right to give him praise. Are y'all listening to me? And oh, that's one right nobody can take away from us. David said, I praise him because I have a right to praise him. But then I have a reason to praise him. Uh, because the Lord exalted me to become king. I have a right to praise him because of where the Lord brought me from. And all oh, my brothers and my sisters, just like David, I have a reason to give him praise. When I think about where the Lord has brought me from, I can't help but give him praise. Oh, as a people, we ought not ever forget where the Lord brought us from. He brought us from shake and bake to T-bone steaks. Uh, he brought us from cotton sacks to Cadillacs. Am I right about it? He brought us from no doors to a lot of doors. Am I right? Uh, the Lord brought us from a mighty long way. And oh, for that reason, we ought to be willing to give him praise. Anybody here know that the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way? He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. I got a reason to give him praise. He brought me out of some stuff I couldn't get out of on my own. I have a reason to give him praise. But then David said, not only do I have a right and a reason, but I have a responsibility. I got to give him praise. When I think about who he is and what he done for me, it's my responsibility to give him praise. And all oh, my brothers and my sisters, you can't exempt yourself from the responsibility to give God praise because the Bible says we were made to give him praise. Am I right? In Psalm 150, the Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. If you're breathing, you owe God some praise. Ain't God all right? He woke me up this morning. I got to give him praise. He's keeping me day by day. I've got to give him praise. Ain't God all right? Well, I got to close by saying there is some help if you have your feelings in your heart. If you want to know the cure for ill feelings, it's in a name. And that name is Jesus. Anybody here know he's able to fix your heart. He's able to clean your heart. He's able to take ill feelings out of your heart. Hang on, all right. Well, I made up in my mind, I'm gonna praise God no matter who don't like it. Ain't God all right? You can't let people 
determine whether or not you give God praise. You can't let people get in your way of doing what God wants you to do. Am I right? Jesus didn't let nobody stand in the way. When he got ready to heal, he healed anyhow. Am I right about it? Nobody could stop him from raising the dead. Nobody could stop him from dying for our sins. One Friday evening on a hill called Calvary, he died. Didn't he die? Put him in a grave, and they thought it was all over. But early Sunday morning, he got up again. He lived. Anybody know he lives? Anybody know he's able to fix a bad heart? Won't he do it? Ain't he all right? Yeah. Ain't he all right? Oh! Good God Almighty. Oh, yeah! God bless you. I want to extend the invitation to you. I invite you to come. The Bible says she never had any children. You know, when your heart is not right, you will miss out on a lot of blessings. You can't be fruitful to the glory of God when your heart is not right. Ill feelings can ruin your appetite, disturb your sleep. Ill feelings will keep you from having a good reputation. Nobody want to be around you. You got a bad heart, bad attitude, holding something against somebody because folk start putting two and two together. Say, well now, if they get mad at him or her and hold it against them, what will they do if I do something to offend them? You understand? And so don't leave here today knowing that your heart is not right with God. And don't let the devil fool you. Talking about everything fine between me and God, but if you got something that you're holding against somebody else, all is not well with you and God. I invite you to come to the only one who specializes in fixing your heart. Come to God. Come to Jesus. God is able to give us forgiving heart and there might be somebody in your life they offended you they hurt you they whatever they did to you you are still holding it let God fix your heart say Lord I come just as I am I've been holding this Lord and I need you to give me victory over it and God will help you I guarantee you I invite you to come Come. Come by letter by Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Come for rededication. Come for special prayer. This is the opportunity. You can get up and come now and give your heart to the Lord. You can come say, Lord, forgive me. I've been holding something against somebody and some other folk know it. And I'm a member of this church. And it's hindering me. I've even told other folk that I'm holding something against someone so I can't stand it. They hurt my feelings and I can't get over it. And they know it. It's a good time for you to repent of it. Yeah, yeah. Say, Lord, I can't go on like this any longer. I want my heart right. And even though others may have done me wrong, I want to be right in my heart toward them. And let you take care of the rest. Come to Jesus. Come. Come today. This is the moment. This is it. This is your moment.
this is your chance. This is your opportunity to step on board. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. If you're looking for a church home, if you feel led of the Holy Spirit, I invite you to come. Come today. Say, say. Life is too short to harbor ill feelings in your heart. It's too precious for you to waste the rest of your time being upset having scorn and hatred towards somebody. You can ask God, Lord, create in me a clean heart. I've been wrong. And God will come today. Come today. Come today. It's a good day. Amen. It's not worth it. Don't hold anything against the person any longer. you want God's favor, turn it over to the Lord. Whilst on earth thou art called, calling you, not pay.